decision making. And the literature on motivation tells us mm -hmm. that students are more likely to be motivated if they have ownership over their learning processes. That is, uh, if they're able to make decisions about the content or the procedures, for example, of, of language learning activities or other uh, parts of the language learning process. Now, Linda Murphy, who is famous, or she's known for her work at the Open University in the UK. Open University is a very prestigious distance um, degree course provider and other course types in the United Kingdom. Linda Murphy um, describes uh, in a recent Macmillan book how they set up uh, a strategy at the Open University for language learners to take autonomy or, or become more autonomous in assessment pr procedures at the school. And I think it's something that we could really simply apply at pretty much any school. So in this process, every time that students have to submit a piece of work to be assigned to be graded by the course tutors. There's a two step assessment procedure, self assessment procedure that they have to go through. The first step, the students submit with the work that they are handing in. And they have to, I've taken the questions from Linda Murphy's document here, um, but it says the skills that I've chosen to work on in this assignment, the things I've done well the things I had difficulty with, any, any other comments, right? So the students do a piece of work and they fill in this self-assessment, right? So far, so good. We've, all, we've already mentioned this kind of thing. But Linda Murphy and her colleagues at the Open University take this to another level. So the student hands in the piece of work with self-assessment part one. The tutor then grades the work and gives qualitative, qualitative feedback in written form. And then the students get their work back and they have to complete part two of the self-assessment, which is where they read and they reflect on their feedback. Uh, and it asks them to um, write a summary of the strengths and weaknesses or the good points and the bad points of the piece of work. And then based on their perceived strengths and weaknesses, students are then asked to identify skills that they wish to improve for their next assignment, right? And asked to come up with an action plan of how they're going to do it. Now, in order to facilitate this process, the students receive first a tips sheet, which helps them process the feedback from their tutor and tells them not to focus on kind of the emotional element of being criticized, but focus on the key language learning points. And they get a skills sheet, which gives them tips on how they can improve their grammar or how they can improve their reading or listening or speaking skills or whatever. So, and so using the skills sheet, students then come up with an action plan for their next assignment. And so we have this cycle where every time the students submit a piece of work, there's a first self-assessment which reflects on their previous work and shows how it affects the current assignment. And then they get their feedback and that feeds into the next assignment, right? And so what the students identify in part two here, if this makes sense, becomes the content of part one of the next self-assessment. But what do you notice about this? All of the decisions about what I'm going to focus on for this specific development area comes from the student in collaboration with the teacher. So the students are becoming or taking ownership of their language learning process in this way. Okay. Um, so that's one way uh, to incorporate decision making into self-assessment. Um, another way is, I mean, obviously, uh, I don't probably don't need to tell you this, but including a degree of choice in language learning activities. We have to be careful with this because we need to find a balance between the, the right amount of choice and too much choice. And there's research that shows that students that are given complete freedom of choice over a topic, there's, there's one particular research where students had to prepare a, a, a presentation on a famous Russian uh, and the students that were given complete free choice over the choice of Russian spent so long agonizing over which Russian to choose that they didn't have enough time to do the task. And they reported, they self-reported as having low levels of motivation for the activity. So we need to find a balance between completely free choice and a kind of 
limited amount of choice that the students can manage. This is a classic example from a course book. The students have to write an article, uh, a, a review, sorry, not an article. They have to write a review for a product that they've bought and they're encouraged to use one of the three items shown on the screen. So you have some choice, but not too much choice because too much choice can be overwhelming or too cognitively demanding, right? And the a final element of choice that is really important because of all the time that we spent talking about retrieval and flashcards is about vocabulary. And we need to help students make choice, make prudent choices about the words that they should study. Now, if you've ever seen Macmillan's online dictionary, you will know that it has red words and a star rating for words. And so there are three star words, two star words, and one star word. Three stars basically means that the word is in the top 2,500 words in terms of frequency. So those would be the words that our students should focus on to, to build that initial 3,000 word vocabulary to be able to understand 95% of, of spoken language. So when students see a text and they think, oh no, there's words I don't know in this text, then if we can show them how to use the Macmillan Dictionary, it will be the three star words that they should focus on. Now, maybe you're saying, look, my students are beginners. They're nowhere near top 2,500 words. There are plenty of other tools that we can use for this. This is an example from the website um, English Corpus, or the English Corpus website, and I'll give you the full link at the end. This used to be called the Bing Bingham Young uh, Corpus, and it's where you can find the, the Corpus of Contemporary American English. It has this amazing text analysis tool where you can copy any paragraph or any piece of text. You can put it into the system, and it will give you a breakdown of the word frequency. So this paragraph here, the turquoise words are in the top 500, the green words are in the top 3,000. So those would be the words that we want to focus on. And obviously at a beginner level, the top 500 words would be our priorities, right? So we can use this free tool to help students make prudent decisions about what vocabulary to study, okay? So I'll give you the link in a minute. These were the five keys to developing learner independence. Um, I've tried to show you that just giving students work to do asynchronously will not necessarily result in good independent learning, that we need to set up and plan independent learning in such a way that incorporates some of the ideas that I've talked about today. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the talk. Here are the links and the reading list. And if there are any questions, I hope we have time to answer a couple of them. So I'll go back to Will, if that's okay. All right, well, I don't appear to see Will. So yeah, here he comes. All right, sorry, Will. Sorry for being impatient. Hello. All right, good. You took screenshots of the reading list. Good. Uh, the the flashcard app, the flashcard app is Anki, right? So if you want to use a flashcard app, uh, which uh, to learn vocabulary is the one that I've suggested called Anki. If you can still see me, um, I was just going to show you Anki quickly on my phone. So, and there is a there's a desktop version as well. Uh, Will is there? Just quickly, Will, just give me a second. So sure. this is this is the Anki Joyed app. I have a, a, a an English word, and then I have a, a Spanish translation on the other side. So in Spanish, to say quid pro quo, we say Tina y Daca. And then at the bottom, it it has elements of space repetition. So if I don't know the word, I can have it come back in one minute, and I can see it again. And then it will come back in ten minutes. Then it will come back in one day three days, a week, whatever you set it at, right? So we have elements of space repetition. That's, that's Anki, and that's a flashcard app for learning vocabulary. Okay, Will's here, so over to you. Oh, thanks, Mark. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, that, Mark, that was just absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. What a session. What a session. That yeah? was absolutely that's, packed. That's really I mean, just, oh, no, Mark, I'm not just saying it. I'm not just saying it. I mean, everyone just loves it. It's just got so much detail, and I think certainly from the feedback we've had and from what I saw as well, it's just such such a relevant talk. Um, I think everything there is just what people are looking for now um, to help students come back and start sort of at this stage of whatever's happened in their life, just start taking control of their own 
of their own learning now. And that was just absolutely superb. Thanks so much for all the work you put into that, Mark. Absolutely brilliant.